Welcome to the Zen Crypto Show, where we explain cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology in simple terms, so you can feel comfortable interacting with and investing in crypto. I'm your host, Sebastian Couture. It seems that right now, everyone is either talking about NFTs or about launching one, and some NFT artwork is selling for millions of dollars, which is insane. But what are these non-fungible tokens, which is what NFT stands for, and why are they such a big deal? Well, in this episode, we'll explore NFTs in three parts. First, we'll talk about collectibles and why we value them in society. Second, we'll describe what an NFT is and the opportunities that it's creating for artists and creators. And finally, we'll describe one NFT project in particular. Let's get started. A lot of people collect things. It might be teacups, sports memorabilia, old records, DVDs, and even expensive cars. If it exists, you can be pretty sure that someone out there is collecting it. Collecting things is part of our nature. I mean, when I was a kid, I collected pogs and hockey cards and stamps and even rocks. And when I was in my 20s, I had this massive collection of rare and obscure classic rock music on my computer. And I cherished that collection and I showed it off to everyone. People collect things because it materializes their passions and helps them tell a story about who they are. And collectibles provide a sense of ownership and belonging to something bigger. And it helps us identify to a culture. You know, culture is brought to life and remembered through collections. Just think of museums. They're a great example of how we collect things in order to help remember the past and remember our culture. We collect things also for approval and social validation in our peer group. When I was about 10, I used to send letters to my favorite hockey players, and I would always enclose a hockey card and ask them to send it back with their autograph. Well, one day Wayne Gretzky sent me back an autograph card, and I brought it to school. I showed all my friends, and I, I felt so cool and privileged to be holding something which had been touched and autographed by the great one. Collectibles get their value through many of the same mechanisms which makes anything valuable. It's just supply and demand. In 2021, an original Wayne Gretzky mint condition rookie card from 1979 sold at auction for almost $4 million. And the, the card is so valuable precisely because there's probably only a handful of them in existence. And we can't just make more 1979 mint condition Gretzky rookie cards. Demand is created by the scarcity of desirable items. The scarcity plays a big role in determining something's value. And we already brushed on this topic in previous episodes when discussing the value of money. So when central banks print more money, there's more of it to go around. So it's less scarce, and therefore it can depreciate in value. But if you take a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, well, there's only a limited amount of it. So if there's a demand for that scarce resource, it will appreciate in value. Well, the same mechanisms exist with collectibles. NFT stands for non-fungible token, which I know is a really unintelligible expression. Lots of people prefer to call them nifties, but NFT is pretty widely used. Remember, something is fungible when it's interchangeable with something else, like a euro is equivalent to another euro. But something which is non-fungible means that it's non-replaceable or it's non-interchangeable. So even if you had two of the same collectible, like two of those 1979 Gresky cards, well, they're not really the same. You know, one could be in better condition than the other. One could be autographed. Non-fungibility is a property of any collectible object, whether it's physical or digital. Every collectible is a unique item. NFTs are unique digital files that anyone can collect and own. It can be an image, a sound file, a movie. It could be 3D art or just text. And what makes it different from any other digital file is that it has a special property. It's possible to easily prove and with absolute certainty that the file is unique. So NFTs are created on blockchains. And just like with any other crypto asset, NFTs can be stored, sent, or received by anyone. And Ethereum is one place where people and artists are creating NFTs. But there are other blockchains like Solana, 
Tezos and BitClout, which in some cases can be faster and cheaper to use, and people are using those to create NFTs as well. But no matter the platform on which NFTs are minted, which means created, the blockchain guarantees that the NFT is both unique and that it belongs to someone. NFTs allow us to prove that something is unique in the digital world. And remember, on a computer, you can make unlimited copies of things at no cost. You know, if you think about it, this is also what cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ether have achieved. This idea of digital scarcity. You know, because our lives are becoming increasingly digital, it's inevitable that this human need for owning and collecting things is entering the digital space. So why are NFTs so big right now? Well, it's money, of course. But, you know, behind the NFT gold rush, there's something more profound, which I think is shaping the creator economy. Until not too long ago, an artist or a creator could only make a decent living through intermediaries. So I'm talking about agents, music labels, movie studios, app stores, and music stores. These are the middlemen of the creator economy. And we've talked a lot about middlemen in this series, so I hope you're starting to see a common theme here. These intermediaries are the gatekeepers to discovery, which means that they either have the contacts or the network or the platform with lots of people who could potentially see the artist's work. And they take massive fees for this access. You know, I'll help you meet the right record labels or I'll put you on my platform in return for a fee. This is the gatekeeper business model. So for example, developers who sell their apps through the Apple App Store pay 30% of their revenues to Apple. Now I'm certainly not condoning Apple for making a profit on the opportunities they provide to creators. And they've created tons of opportunities for the creator economy. But for many creators, it's the one and only option. And there's a dependent relationship between the platform and the creator, which puts the creator at a disadvantage. With NFTs, creators now have direct access to their fan base and their customers without intermediaries. They can create, sell, and transfer their art directly without a gatekeeper. And because NFTs are minted on a blockchain, and the blockchain is programmable, they can also create their own rules, like, for example, they can build in a royalty scheme which will allow them to earn revenue for future sales forever. But it doesn't stop there, and NFTs are creating opportunities for a much broader set of artists and creators. I mean, certainly more than what you would think of in terms of a traditional artist. You know, with the advent of social media, anyone can become a creator. I mean, just think of all these TikTok and Instagram and YouTube stars who started with nothing and amassed millions of followers just by creating content which resonates with people. Well, social media companies are also gatekeepers. You know, they make tons of money from advertising off of the content of creative people who bring in users. The really big influencers are able to strike deals with social media platforms, but these deals are on the terms of the platform usually. NFTs offer an opportunity to create a new type of content platform or social media platform where users are truly the owners of their content and they can earn money directly from their fans without the approval or validation of the platform. Ultimately, NFTs provide creators with the tools to liberate themselves from the concentration of power held by big tech companies who profit from the content, get to set the terms of use, and can shut down or censor accounts as they wish. So you've probably heard about NFTs selling for millions of dollars. And the idea that someone would pay that much for a JPEG file sounds absolutely nuts to most people, including myself. You know, but why are these things worth so much? Well, the answer is simple. They're worth whatever someone's willing to pay for them. It's just like that Gretzky rookie card. A lot of people think that digital art is going to become a huge market. You know, this is especially true since we're living more and more of our lives online and you know, people are actually creating virtual worlds where folks can work and come together with their friends. And a lot of people think that the first NFTs could be worth a lot in the future. You know, it's kind of like 
having the opportunity to buy one of the first pieces of land in Manhattan in the 17th century. Some NFTs will resonate with you because you like the concept or you like the art. It could be a cool looking cat or some abstract painting and others are going to be just worthless to you. You know, but this isn't a foreign concept. I mean, why do you like the clothes you buy or the music you like? It all comes down to taste in the end. With cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ether, the price is determined by market demand. But an NFT's price is just how much someone's willing to pay for it. So CryptoPunks is one of the first NFT collections. And as I'm recording this, the highest price for one of these is about 8 million US dollars. Now, that might sound just crazy, but to some people, you know, with whom this concept really resonates, it can mean more than owning a Rolex or a Rolls Royce. So to get your hands on an NFT, there's two ways you can go about it. You can buy one secondhand from someone who's either selling one or creating one. Or you can mint one by yourself by creating NFT from your own art or creation. So what are people really buying, though, when they're buying an NFT? Well, there are hundreds of different NFT collections uh, as I'm recording this. And one example is called Pudgy Penguins. And just, you know, go Google Pudgy Penguins to get an idea of, of what this looks like. And there is about 9,000 of these. And each is a picture of a cute looking penguin. And each of these penguins is unique. Remember, there's 9,000 of them. Each of them have unique traits. Could be like a different shirt or a different hat or a different eyewear or the background could be different. But they're all 100% unique. So let's talk about traits for a second. Some of these traits are more rare than others. So, for example, there might be a, a few thousand penguins not wearing a hat. And they're not really special because like there's lots of them. But there's just a handful of the penguins that are wearing, you know, a cowboy hat in the entire collection. So cowboy hat penguin is more rare. And, you know, there might be another trait which is rare, like a diamond earring. So if you get a penguin that has several rare traits, well, people will think that's more unique and it'll probably be sold for more. I mean, think of it like this. There's lots of houses on the market. And most of them are average and they sell for an average price. But some houses have unique traits, like maybe there's a hot tub. And usually that makes that house more desirable. But if a house has lots of unique features, like a fireplace and antique moldings and a hot tub and an amazing ocean view, and I don't know, it was owned by Nicolas Cage or something like that, well, that house is probably worth a lot more. When people are buying NFTs, they're not just buying files. They're buying strong signals of social status. It's the same reason people buy fancy cars and expensive watches. They're also buying access to a community of people who share their values and are the same social status. And this might give them special rights. Like, for example, someone could organize a conference or an event where only the people owning a specific NFT collection could attend. NFTs are symbols of digital status. The NFT ecosystem is an amazing space, and it's probably going to be one of the biggest use cases for blockchains. And they're creating amazing opportunities for a new generation of creators who want more agency when it comes to their art and more freedom than what's given to them traditionally by gatekeepers. And big brands are also starting to explore the space, experimenting with their own NFT projects and buying artwork. NFTs take crypto beyond the purely financial applications we've been talking about so far in the series and into a mainstream idea that anyone can understand and get behind. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Zen Crypto Show, which is produced by Zengo, where you can buy, sell, trade, and earn cryptocurrencies with mind-bending simplicity and safety. If you enjoyed this episode, head over to Apple Podcasts and let us know what you learned by leaving a review. And if you'd like to suggest a topic for future episodes, email podcast at zengo.com. Until next time, stay zen.